China's new agricultural law enforcement officers are not only legalized thugs, they could be a sign of worse things to come. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. You know, you gotta hand it to the Chinese Communist Party. They have a commitment to excellence. You'd think with constant surveillance, an army of police, and unlimited prisons, black jails, and labor camps, you'd think the Communist Party would be satisfied. We've made the lives of Chinese people miserable enough. No, they always strive for more. Enter Cheng Guang, urban management officers. They're responsible for keeping order on city streets. They're not police. They're more like legalized thugs. They've been known to brutalize beggars, smash unlicensed fruit vendors' carts, kill unregistered pets, and assist in the forced demolition of people's homes. Like I said, the party always goes that extra mile for evil. And so do Cheng Guang. It gets even crazier. Cheng Guang have been known to get a little too enthusiastic about their job and, well, let's just say it doesn't end so well for the other side. Like in 2011, when they beat to death a one-legged street vendor in Guizhou province. Yep, extra mile for evil. People were obviously very upset by that, rightfully so. Because if you see some Cheng Guang kill a handicapped person and aren't mad, then they'd love to recruit you. That's actually part of the job interview. That and seeing American Psycho as a lighthearted comedic instruction video. But anger against Chen Guang boiled over in 2014. A Chen Guang beat a street vendor with a big metal hammer, and then, I kid you not, a thousand person mob showed up shouting, kill them. State run media said they were fine. But as I said at the beginning, the Chinese Communist Party always goes that extra mile. There's a problem with Chen Guang. They're urban management officers. What about all the people living in the countryside? What more can the party do to make their lives miserable? Enter rural management officers. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. So the Chinese Communist Party had a problem. People in the countryside didn't have Cheng Guang. Sure, they had rural police, and they were great at killing people, beating them to death, even if they were disabled. But don't you think the peasants could be a little more miserable? That's where the Nongguang come in, rural management officers. That's not actually what they're called, but when the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs recently rolled out the Agricultural Comprehensive Administrative Law Enforcement Department, netizens were quick to label its officers Nongguang, which is basically the rural equivalent of the urban Chengguang. The ministry says they will focus on such useful tasks as catching sellers of counterfeit or substandard seeds, pesticides, and veterinary medicines, or inspecting animals and plants for disease. Because in China, even the seed industry has a seedy underbelly. After all, China does have a long history of food scandals. And the ministry is very adamant they won't be like the Cheng Guang. They said their work will be strict, standardized, fair, and civilized. Minor violations by small farmers will be dealt with flexibility, perhaps with cautions. Which sounds like they're basically admitting the Cheng Guang are thugs. We know those city management officers will murder handicapped people for no reason. But even though there are fewer witnesses and mobs to attack them, these rural management officers will definitely be better. The ministry may think that's what they're doing, but... Listen to how this Nongguang describes his new job. Extra mile for evil. Already, reports of a squad of agricultural enforcement agents in Tibet trying to buy electric shock batons and other police gear have gone viral. But for now, it seems the Nongguang are more focused on ensuring people plant the kinds of crops the government wants them to grow. That's right, farmers in China can't just plant whatever they want, like the chaotic farms of America, because the Communist Party wants more grain. 
Here's some Nongguang and Guanxi province cutting down tobacco plants. They didn't even have the decency to burn them so everyone could enjoy that sweet secondhand smoke. This farmer's pepper plants were wrecked to make way for grain. Same thing with this farmer's ginger crop. Totally destroyed because the Nongguang said they should be growing rice. This bamboo forest, which had been cultivated for three years, cut down to make room for more food crops. And here's a wheat field they reportedly destroyed about a month before it was supposed to be harvested. I mean, sure, they're supposed to be increasing grain production, but sometimes when you're on a roll of destruction, you just gotta keep going. Same goes for these grapevines and 20-year-old pear trees. I've heard of backseat driving, but never backseat farming. If you want to run a farm so bad, instead of destroying people's lives, just play Stardew Valley and ruin your own life, since that game is so maddeningly addictive. Which Shelly and I found out when we played it on our other channel, Gamers Unbeaten. It's not just plants, either. They kill livestock, too. Here's an image of them killing someone's ducks. There's a whole video of this, but I'm going to spare you the trauma, plus hopefully save us from being demonetized. Not that we're likely to get any ad revenue after showing those Chengguang, but anyways. Again, if they wanted to kill ducks, they could have just played Duck Hunt. I feel like we could save everyone a lot of grief if we just got these rural thugs a Nintendo Switch. So why is the Chinese Communist Party doing this, other than the love of evil? I'll tell you after this quick commercial break. Probably will be really quick if we get demonetized. Welcome back. So why has the party rolled out with the Nongguang now? Food security. This report from the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs says the Nongguang are carrying out a special campaign to stabilize grain and protect food supply. This is in line with a recent state council document saying the country's priorities for this year are food security and preserving farmland. And they're preserving food by destroying crops and livestock. Didn't think that one through, did you? Last year, devastating droughts and heat waves destroyed massive crops. The government even rolled out laws against food waste, eating too much, and leftovers. Wow, communism is a utopia. China does not grow enough food to feed its population. Fortunately, the population is shrinking. And if that's not enough, the Communist Party knows a trick or two to make it shrink faster. But China depends on food imports. It gets about 40% of its grains from the U.S., its mortal enemy. And before the war, its second largest source of grain was Ukraine, which made up about 16% of its grain imports. Let's just say the U.S.-China trade war and the war in Ukraine have been a wake-up call for Xi Jinping about the extreme importance of food security. Take soybeans, for example. Soybeans are heavily used in cooking oil in China, as well as livestock feed, which is why it's considered one of China's Achilles' heels when it comes to food security. Of course, China's main Achilles heel when it comes to food insecurity is actually government incompetence, but sure, let's blame the main ingredient of tofu instead. China imports about 80% of its soybeans from other countries, and the U.S. makes up about a third of that. During the U.S.-China trade war, China put tariffs on U.S. soybeans in retaliation for American tariffs on Chinese goods. Shortly after the tariffs were put on, though, China offered waivers to U.S. soybean farmers, said this was a goodwill gesture, but I'm sure there was more than a little self-interest involved there. Analysts at Heilongjiang Agricultural Investment Group, a big state-owned farming company, wrote that the U.S. could launch a food war against China by cutting food supplies, which could be more brutal than the trade war. And if China were to say, oh, I don't know, invade Taiwan, that could be a very real problem. If the U.S. and its allies were to punish China by putting sanctions on food imports, China could face a major food shortage. And if China faces a food shortage, it could spell the end of the CCP. After starving in their homes for almost three years, Chinese citizens weren't afraid to protest the CCP's harsh COVID lockdowns. And most importantly, they weren't afraid to call for Xi Jinping and the CCP to step down, which I'm sure terrified Chinese leaders. This is why Xi Jinping is talking about food security as the foundation of national security. Of course, not all that long ago, the party decided it wanted massive urbanization. So back in 2014, the central government created a plan to move 
250 million people from farms to the city by 2025. Didn't think that one through, did ya? Or when the party decided it wanted to help the environment by turning farmland into forests. Sure, those government-led initiatives blew up spectacularly, but this new one will be different. Yes, just a few years ago we were saying move to the cities, but now you should move to the countryside. I feel like China would have been better prepared if their leaders played more SimCity. Man, is there any problem video games can't solve? You know, other than being addicted to video games. Now, with all this talk of a food crisis, you might make the mistake of thinking that China has some kind of food crisis. No. State-run media assures us grain production is only growing. The Nongguang are just destroying people's crops and forcing them to grow grain for the love of evil. And as always, this show would not exist without support from viewers like you on the crowdfunding website Patreon. They're what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. And as a thank you to them, I answer their questions at the end of each episode. Today's question comes from David Michael White. Chris, is there a particular fashion style from the Tang Dynasty area that you like the most? Oh, that's an easy one, David. Women in the Tang Dynasty would shave off their eyebrows, get that Goku look. Irresistible. Thanks for your question and your support, David. Thank you for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.